Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the episode number two of the I Am Prosperity series. I trust you enjoy the last video. If you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest you go back and watch the first one. I Am Prosperity, and you will see how wealth comes out in your affairs. Whatever you believe comes. Whatever you think expresses. You build your consciousness with your I am. By the things you think and do all day long, as we think in our I am and in our heart, so are our circumstances. Do you grasp that principle? You who are looking for better jobs, more income, greater freedom, if you do, the circumstances in your life will have to change. It is important to make up your mind about the things you wish to demonstrate, but it is more important to be willing to change your mind in order to get them. So this whole series, it really is about a study of consciousness, right? And there's science behind that, because affirmation changes how we perceive. How we process information about ourselves, and their study has been done in 2016. There's MRI evidence suggesting that certain neural pathways are increased when people practice self-affirmation. If you want to be super specific, it is called the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. It involves in positive evaluation and self-related information processing, and that section becomes more active when we consider our personal values and when we practice it. Affirmations, right? And the most important affirmation here for you to take away is "I am prosperity." And follow up with where we left off last time: ten things to remember when demonstrating prosperity. Part two, number five: we overcome poverty by mastering the sense of every kind of luck. That is just thoughts that we have from our mind. Events are just events, and how our brain interpreting them. It becomes lack or abundance because even you just have a little. Actually, like the podcast me and Christina talk about, who is the acting editor in chief from Coin Telegraph, she mentioned this. Even you just have a little, very very little, or you go through some tragedy, but you focus on what you have, and that actually creates this happiness feeling, this grateful feeling, right? And we can overcome that by shifting our focus. Number six. We look not to the world of things, persons, and places in solving a problem of supply, but look within our own consciousness. Number seven, we master the sense of want by building our inner sense of plenty. Because there's actually a phrase from the Bible, "The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want." Because want is very specific word. And it creates a certain kind of feeling, right? Although in English we say a lot about "I want," or in Spanish about "yo quiero," talking about some certain kind of desire, right? But "want" also referring to that you don't have that now in this moment. It connect and speak with your own subconscious as well, and which is super super powerful. And number eight, we can have anything we desire if we believe that we already have it. This one right here. If you only take one sentence from today's video, I wish to be that one. Let me repeat: We can have anything we desire if we believe that we already have it. And which leads to my mentor Joseph Rodriguez and Neva Goddard. They talk a lot about feeling the wish fulfilled. You sit somewhere where you lay down in your bed before you go to sleep. You really envision. You really feel. Everything in detail and provoke the feeling that you already accomplished your goals. And personally, one way I do that is because me and my business partners we live in different time zones, right? So, for example, sometimes or a lot of time, I will call my business partners before I go to bed. Although that might lead to a late night conversation till two o'clock or five o'clock in the morning sometimes, but we really invoke these feelings of the wish fulfilled among us. And every time when I carry that feeling. To go to sleep, not only I wake up feeling super energetic, but also you go to sleep feeling very satisfied. <laughs> 
this um, little lovely kitty passing by. And number nine, prosperity is not a matter of education, training, working, saving, investing, struggling, or denying yourself. It is a matter of getting into harmony with the law of your own individual consciousness and then following that law to its logical conclusion. Again, we're not talking about rocket science. We're not talking about alchemy necessarily, but or you could actually call it mental alchemy. But we are talking about something that is fundamental, everybody can understand, which is basic psychology, which is consciousness and subconsciousness. A lot of people actually don't know that I have a psychology degree from Washington College in America. And one super simple thing that I would like to share is that the consciousness is actually roughly about 10 to 20% and subconscious is 90 to 80%. And subconscious is imagine that under the water, the iceberg. It's like those thoughts that you're not even aware of. And the whole series, the purpose of me making this video is by you listening to these videos, you can actually reprogram your subconscious mind. Right. And actually, I believe there's a book called How to Program Your Subconscious Mind. It's a very powerful book. More and more so, listen to these videos over and over again. You actually be able to connect the dots in your life differently. And your mind, both conscious and subconscious mind, will actually be able to interpret events in your life in a way that is very supportive, that is very aligned with your vision because it's all already here, right in front of you. You just need to have the eyes to see it. Number 10, the permanent source of our prosperity lies in our power to possess and to mold in our thought. The substance slash God, if you prefer that language. So our prosperity is connected within us, but not only limited by men or humans we're also connected to a higher source actually drop a comment down below if you believe that or if you have some kind of incidents in your life that really made you believe that there is a higher power when i was much younger i didn't believe that at all but now i'm more and more mature and continuously growing and accomplishing on the path of entrepreneurship i really believe that there is a higher power but now you might want to ask why are there so much poverty and sickness in the world if there is higher power right because we direct its power towards negative and inharmonious ends we do so by doubt fear anger hurry hatred arrogance vanity and resentment actually a book recommended by my dear friend ash called Letting Go by David Hawkins, also mentioned there is this scale of energy, of emotions, right? There are lower vibration type of emotions and there's also higher vibration kind of energy, right? The higher ones are peace, enlightenment, love, acceptance, courage, and lower ones are the one I mentioned, doubt, fear, anger, hatred, arrogance, vanity, resentments, and jealousy, which is a lot of these come from, I believe the seven scenes since from the Christianity. And also Joseph Rodriguez and David Goddard mentioned a lot about faith is the substance of things we hope for, the evidence of things not seen. They mentioned that faith is loyalty to the unseen reality. And actually in the last video I mentioned, right, there are only about 23% of matter in this universe, which leave the majority 67% in the universe that we cannot see, cannot touch, is not tangible. Unlike this microphone, unlike my face, hair, and it's cool sweatshirt I'm wearing, right? So rest there for a second. Some quick bullet points for you, right? Higher power, be loyal to your vision, although it's not extremely tangible here in this moment. Do you have the audacity? to just let go and embrace that possibility that is already here. Let me throw you a verse from King James Version. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, 
be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he saith. This verse here, the fundamental message is that we shall have no doubt in our hearts, but believe that it will happen, and it is happening now. And when we do that, it will be done for us. Again and again, here I mention the importance of thoughts. Thoughts are like seeds. They need you to nurture them, to use focused actions on top of your thoughts to bring forth your ideals, right? And again, in the book, you too can be prosperous. I said there is a ball, like a lily pattern, way down here. In the earth, and as long as that bulb is there and undisturbed and being nurtured, it will bring forth an abundance of lilies without a doubt. That is just nature, right? Which really comes down to you have an ideal of something you would like to accomplish, whether it's grow your YouTube channel, launch your business, be able to work remotely, and bring in X amount of thousands of dollars, you know, tens of thousands, a hundred thousand, whatever dollars or euros or bitcoins every month. And you have that ideal, and you nurture that. You're watering that every day. You take action towards it, and one thing led to another. And also, you follow your intuition more and more. So you realize that there are people coming into your life. There are things happening for you to set you on that path. And also, keep in mind, be patient as well. People always overvalue what they could accomplish, let's say in three to six months, but they so. Underestimate what they could accomplish in one year or two years. And actually, last week I just dropped this video, which is mark the one year anniversary of the Future Hour podcast. What a journey, you know! And I want to say here, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing this channel, and you guys, y'all are the reason that I'm doing this every day. So we're gonna wrap it up this video with. Last video we talk about have faith in the universe, put rich ideas to work, and build for eternity. And today, we want to bring this concept. Just close your eyes for a second. Picture this. Just entertain me, okay? If you had a little magic box in your home that produced whatever you wanted, whenever you opened the lid, what would happen to your state of consciousness, your thoughts, and your feelings? The first thing that would happen would be a complete change in your thinking. All fear would go out of it. All worry, all lack, and all sense of insecurity. Knowing that you could go to your little box as often as you needed would eliminate all sense of limitation and strain from your mind. There would be no more poverty in your life. Having what you wanted when you wanted it. It would not only lift you above the plane of material need, but would also, if you use that power wisely, make you a better, more useful, and more effective and attractive person. Hmm. Do I hear you say that is a lot of nonsense? But here's the punchline: the box is a symbol of your consciousness, and to approach it in the right way, the right idea in mind. The right seed to nurture is to cause the box to open and to remove all want from your life. So let's be frank with yourself. What have you been seeking these many years? Answer me. Drop a comment here down below. Have you been seeking the spirit of things, the dream at its pure form, or just things? This is Jazzy from the Future Hour. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. New video coming to you every week, and share this to a dear friend. Who knows? It might change your life. It probably would. Much love. Till next time.